Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, James Proton. Every week I will be sharing the experiences that have defined my journey and talking with people who have their own powerful story to tell. It's about doing better and being better in life, business, and all things in between. The Visually Inclined can catch us on YouTube, or you can check us out on just about every podcast platform. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Our guest today is Justin Ellis. This is um, full disclosure. It's the first time we're meeting. Yeah, we were you, we were introduced by a mutual friend, our friend Melissa Migliaro, and and welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I am too. Um, you know, and this is this is really cool because I know two things about you. Your name is Justin Ellis, and you're an attorney. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> no, so. One thing she, that, that she did mention is that you, you specialize in elder law in your, your firm. Yeah. And uh, well, being an elder, I'm very curious about this. I'm interested. So tell, okay, let's, let's start off with that, and then we'll come back around to some things. What, what exactly is elder law? Yeah. I, I don't think anybody <laughs> knows. <laughs> Anytime I say elder law, they say, what is that? Yeah. Um, how I try to explain it. It's traditional estate planning, okay. wills, powers of attorney, estate administration, uh, but really with a, a holistic focus, uh, leveraging public benefits mm -hmm. for veterans benefits, Medicaid benefits, okay. um, and making sure that seniors age, get appropriate care, mm -hmm. and don't go broke trying to pay for it. Okay. Um, there's no point in having an estate plan if there's no estate left. True. To administer. That's, and, that's exactly right. And so we really try to focus on uh, preserving people's estates and to leave a legacy for their family. And that, that wow, that's amazing. And, and that's, that's not what I thought it was. But it, at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm, at that, I'm at that age, right? And I think that those things that you talked about, particularly legacy, it is so important. And most people don't know how to do that, how to make that, you know— we don't, by nature, think about what will be here, what we leave after we're gone. Yeah, you and know? I think everybody wants to leave something. So mm -hmm. most of our clients have worked their entire lives to, you know, buy a home, mm -hmm. have a little nest egg, um, and they want to leave that to sure. their kids. Um, and they're not sure how to go about that. And so we get clients all the time coming in saying, you know, if I need nursing home care, I don't want the, the nursing home to come in and take the house. Yeah. And so we try to develop a plan to preserve that, but still get eligible for benefits if they need nursing home care. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a bit of a misnomer, elder law, because I frequently say elder law and they say, oh, that's not me. Not yet. Um, but really, we still do a traditional estate planning for younger couples. So I have, you know, families just starting out. Sure. Doing will, okay. powers of attorney. Uh, we even do powers of attorney, just anybody over age 18. Mm -hmm. So we have... People going off to college, uh, got to have power of attorney yeah. in place. So, right. uh, yeah. I, it, you don't even think of that. Yeah, you know, I that's wow. I have three kids graduated from college and grandkids, and I I never thought of it. Yeah, uh, you know, something happens to them at school, um, some sort of you know event. You have no once they're eighteen, you don't have any right to make decisions for them. So, uh, really, power of attorney is uh, the foundation of any estate plan. So that's so cool. That's so cool. So, okay. Wow. Interesting. So you're a local guy. You said you grew up in Peter's Township? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so went to Central Catholic High School uh, in okay. Pittsburgh. Cool. I uh, live in Bike Side now. Go bike? Yeah. Uh, but went to Pitt Law School. Okay. And that's actually how I got into elder law. I uh, had no idea that's what I wanted to do. Um, but Pitt has an elder law clinic where while you're in school, you can represent clients wow. um, before ever taking the bar. Um, so really had my first taste of practice in elder law, mm -hmm. um, really enjoyed it and, uh, you know, stuck with it was fortunate. Is that something that wasn't on your radar when you went to law school? No, not at all. Uh, I knew I didn't want to work for a big firm, wanted to work for a small firm, mm -hmm. um, but didn't know what I wanted to do. A friend of mine asked if I would do the clinic with her. Um, so glad she asked, uh, cause yeah, it really cool. it directed me. So, right, you know. right. Right. Wow, that is awesome. So, and you, you know, again, it's small world. You mentioned uh, the the Motiki family from Shawroy, people name that I know know very well in my hometown. And so, is 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 your wife from down in Abenaki Lewis? So my wife 
it has a huge family. So oh, yeah. my uh, mother-in-law is one of 10. Uh, my father-in-law is one of nine. Um, wow. They, so my mother-in-law is from Pittsburgh originally. Okay. Uh, from the Shaler area. Okay. Uh, my father-in-law is from Columbus area. Okay. Uh, but my mother-in-law is the only of the 10 to have left Pittsburgh. So, uh, so it's wow. still a lot of people in Pittsburgh. That's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot. Yep. God bless her. That's a lot of aunts and uncles. Yeah. Uh, Irish Catholic family. So there you go. St. Well, Patrick's Day it. parade tomorrow. Uh, that 60 people will be together. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your own parade. Yeah. You don't even have to go to Pittsburgh. Yep. So what do you what do you like to do? What do you what do you do in your spare time? You, you said you had a crazy dog. What kind of dog do you have? A uh, German short hair pointer. Uh, okay. A bird dog. So uh, I do a lot of energy. Hunting. Yeah, <laughs> you a hunter? Yeah, yep. Uh, I grew up doing archery. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, uh, haven't had time to do it lately. Um, yeah, but uh, do a trip out to South Dakota and do some pheasant hunting out there. Okay, and I get to take the dog. Beautiful uh, part of the world. I was just in North Dakota. Okay, yeah, uh, it's amazing out there. Yeah, so do that. A lot of um, backpacking, stuff like that. So you're an outdoors guy. Yeah, yep. love being outside. Uh, bicycling. Uh, so I told you I live down on the north side. Yeah. Uh, which is nice. Everything's flat down there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, despite the river trail and everything yeah. isn't flat. Yeah. So. Wow. Now, I mean, this is fascinating. You know, I, I love getting to, to meeting people and getting to know new people. And, and so how did you how did you connect with Melissa? Uh, so Melissa has been a great resource for the entire firm. So mm -hmm. um, Zachariah Brown, who I work for, Small firm. Uh, I think we're eight attorneys uh, oh, okay. in the area. Um, and she has worked with us on a number of events. So I told you we try to be holistic uh, mm -hmm. approach. Um, we do events called Learn, Care, Share that are really focused less on the legal aspects and more on caregivers, um, yeah. giving them resources. Um, and Melissa has been involved in all of those events. Okay. So she's been a, a great resource. She's a she's a big part of who we are. Um, this really helps us out, and she's really recommended some tremendous guests, and in, including you yourself. And she's uh, she's a pretty special kid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's cool. So Zachariah Brown is that um, is, is is that an attorney's name? Is that the uh, it's, so there are two partners, uh, Christine Brown and Carl Zachariah. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, so they are the named partners. There's a third partner, uh, Colleen Brakovich, uh, who's not a named partner, but still partner in the firm. Um, and so they uh, started the firm. Oh, Carl's been doing this since like 1994, I think. Okay. Um, so, and I've been with the firm for almost 10 years now. Wow. But, Very cool. That uh, This is fascinating. I, I, I think that, you know, I don't understand the law at all. Right. I, I know enough to stay out of trouble. So I, I don't do that. But I, I love the idea that, you know, when you when you watch television, for example, and you say, I, I think I need to call my attorney. I always feel bad because I don't have an attorney. I, you know, I, it's one of those things like, you know, if I need one, I'll go find one. I'll say, hey, do you know a good attorney? Yeah. But I, 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 I don't have an attorney on speed. Now, yeah. So, yeah. You know, I, maybe <laughs> I'm missing something. I don't know. Uh, no. And that's it, it's the kind of thing estate planning. People never want to do it. Sure. They always think that they have more time. You know, they know I'm they... I'm one of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm one. Yeah. So it's always, you know, oh, it's it's on my list, but, you know, I'll get to it. I'm, I'm good now. Um, we try to make the process as easy as possible. And my goal is, you know, you don't see me again for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Right. After, right. <laughs> after you right. meet with me. Um, so we try to build enough contingencies into a, any estate plan that change of circumstances you don't need to update your estate um so you know it, it's the kind of thing people don't want to do but once it's done it's a relief you're really happy you did it. yeah and then yeah. you don't have to see me again yeah <laughs> right 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 wow see you know i think i think about it a lot but it, but you're right it's just like you know i think about it so oh, yeah i got it i i need to do that and then six months have gone by and i still haven't done it you know and and it's like one of those things you just keep kicking that can down the road because you think you have time. Six months becomes a year and right. then you're a right. decade on. And, yeah. Right. Definitely. That's, and it, you know, again, you're, 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 you're at a get to a point in your life, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not old by any stretch of imagination. I'm 64, but there are things that I think, okay, I'm behind on. I should be do. I should have done this, this, and this by now. You know, and even 
when you talk about power of attorney, it's, uh, you know, my, my, my wife and I, and I call her my wife, we're, we're not married, we've lived together for a very, very long time, so it, we're, we're married without a piece of paper. Yeah. But I, I've often thought that because there's, there's stepchildren, grandchildren, all these different moving parts, you know, um, and even though, we, you know, everybody sits around and we're, by, uh, we're, we're one big happy family, but, you know, if something happened to her, right, I have no legal right to make decisions for her, even though she's as much my wife as if we had that piece of paper saying that. Yeah. You know, and honestly, it's a common misconception that you're really no different than any other married couple. So uh, even married couple got to have power of attorney. Yes. Because yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Something happens to your spouse just because you're married doesn't give you the legal authority to, you know, sell property, uh, make legal decisions. You got to have power of attorney even for married couples. That's see, that's amazing. So I was wrong. So now I actually technically don't have to get married, right? Because we, <laughs> other the, the the other ship is sailed. The but, is <laughs> yeah. So because my thing was, you know, it, 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 w- see, her her thing is, well, you know, we've been we've lived together for over twenty years as husband and wife. What's going to change if we get that piece of paper, other than having a piece of paper? Yeah. And my thing was, well, all of these things, protections and different things like that. So I'm trying to figure out how to ask her to, to, you know, we really should get married because, of, you know, that's not very romantic. You know, women don't. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's flawed thinking anyway. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know that. Yeah. All sorts <laughs> of other implications. Uh, no, and, and we see it frequent. Mm-hmm. And I don't ever advise people to get married or not get married <laughs> based on uh, legalities. Right. Uh, right. But, I mean, things like, um, you know, taxes. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have joint assets, one of you passes away, you're going to pay 15% inheritance taxes. Whereas if you're married, 0% inheritance tax between spouses. So, again, yeah. every situation's different. Uh, sure. I wouldn't tell you to get married just to avoid taxes. <laughs> uh, she wouldn't listen an anyway. <laughs> she knows me too well. Yeah, but it's an, you know, an implication. It is, and, and you're right. There are so many, so many misconceptions about that, you know, just – even just around the aging process in, in particular, there's so many things change in your life. And a lot of times you just don't see it coming. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was 44 last week, you know, now all of a sudden here I am and, and it, it, it happened fast. Yeah. And a lot of what we do in terms of protecting assets, uh, it's a pre-plan where mm-hmm. we're looking to get through a five-year period okay. before we really see the true benefits of that plan. So I typically tell clients, you know, at very least in your early 70s, you want to consider to start doing some true asset preservation mm-hmm. planning um, because we're, if we're trying to get through five years, you're starting to get into your, you know, mid to late 70s, early 80s, right. um, you know, so that's really the, the critical time uh, yeah. if you're looking to do asset preservation planning. Right. But right. again, really, I, I have clients that are in their twin, you know, twenties, thirties that have traumatic brain injuries. That mm-hmm. if they don't have power of attorney, we wind up having to go through a guardianship process, wow. court yeah. hearings, and and it becomes a nightmare. Whereas if you sit down and do the power of attorney in advance, it simplifies everything for your family. That's a big deal. That's huge. Yeah. Nick, I I think I have to give you power of attorney because like you spend more time with me than than Terry does. So, I want to get you that. Not, not this guy. Yeah, so, but uh, the, see, these are all things, that, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this. That I just, I just haven't thought about. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning. Yep. This is cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Justin is um, is an attorney. Zachariah Brown likes the outdoors. Goes hunting in South Dakota with his dog. What, what, what else does our audience need to know about you? Oh, There's something know. else out there. Come on. Oh, I oh, I don't know. That's a tough question. I don't like talking about myself. <laughs> nobody does. Yeah. No no but nobody does. And it's uh you know, I I think that the 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 practice of law itself w- when you think about everything that goes with that to get you to that point where you can you, or you're a practicing attorney when you pass the bar and you're a practicing attorney. It's a lot. It's not just a lot of money, investment. It's a, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of, it, it's just a lot of everything. Yeah. I think I think 
because of our legal system the way it is and our country the way it is. God bless it. I think it's still think it's the greatest country in the world. But because of our system of laws, I think it's harder to become an attorney than any other profession. I truly do. Yeah, I mean, I think the practice of law is where you really learn. So, you know, you go to law school, you take these classes. Law school is designed to teach you essentially how to be a judge, not how to be a lawyer. Really? Um, that's, yeah. uh, that's, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Um, I didn't learn elder law in law school. Okay. You know, even with the clinic. Yeah. It's, you, you get into situations and uh, you learn by doing. So mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to, to join Zachariah Brown Law Firm, and they've been tremendous mentors to teach me. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. You know, and counsel clients. Um, and as issues arise, you do the research, you learn, all of that. Um, but it, that's what is hard is, you know, there's so rarely a right answer. It's exercising judgment, and you yeah. only develop that through experience. There's a lot of gray in, in law. You know, it's not black or white. Yeah. It, you know, it's everything's right here in this in this gray area. You know, when... I spent my career in the engineering profession. You know, if you, you it's math. You do math. You you do the calculation. You design something. You build it. And it, even medicine. I mean, you science is the science is science. It's, it you know, but it, it's so gray in, yeah. in the legal profession. I, I have a lot of respect for you and in, in, for that profession as a whole. Yeah, and I I think what I have enjoyed about the area of law that I'm practicing is. Uh, Clients don't know what to think when they come to us. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes with a state administration or nursing home, they're just so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so I can provide the legal answers that takes that burden off of them. And so they can deal with all of the emotions that are, you know, involved. Sure. And, uh, you know, getting to see the relief that I can provide to clients by mm -hmm. developing a plan and easing that burden is so rewarding. Um, so it, that really, I think, uh, is, is, I feel blessed to be able to do what I do. Okay. For you. Yeah, that's very cool. So what do you, what do you see yourself doing in five years? What's <laughs> next? What's next for Justin? What, 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 what is, uh, what's the future look like for you? Yeah. Uh, the ball? Yeah. you know, still hope to be with Zachariah Brown. I, it's a wonderful firm. It sounds like it, you know, just the way you talk about it is, yeah. is you could tell it. I mean, it's, it's family. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really feel fortunate to have landed uh, at the firm. Cool. Um, we're growing. Uh, just opened up a, an office in Bonita Springs, Florida. Wow. Uh, cool. So hopefully take the bar down there and uh, be able to practice down there as well. Nice. No. Yeah. That's uh, on the five-year plan. <laughs> so that, that, Well, that, that's a good one. You know, that's always been a, uh, a difficult question for me to answer because I, it, it, and, it, and it, it's personality, but I've never looked that far ahead. You know, I've, I've always tried to stay in the moment, but when you think about where, where do you want to be, what, what's, what do you want to be doing, um, I, I think it's really, it's just loving what you do and doing what you love, right? And, yeah. and I see that in you. I hear it in your voice. I mean, you... You found your you found your spot, and is this your first job out of school? Uh, I did a little bit of um, like title research for mm -hmm. real estate oh. um, for about six months before I got hired. So yeah. I had taken the bar, uh, but had not gotten my results back. Okay. And then essentially, as soon as I got my results, they hired me. So you you were blessed. You found you found your family, your home, your first job, which basically first job, which is, you know, that's that's a blessing. Yeah, definitely. You know, and if you could work your whole career there, oh my God, yeah, that would be—that's the goal. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome because yeah. that's almost unheard of. Yeah, it's almost unheard of. You know, even even you know, we we live in a very transient society. People, you know, you go to the the next best thing. Yeah, you know, yep. In and, and loyalty goes both ways. Yeah, it and really we does. You know, uh, the attorneys that have worked there, you know, we've had a few attorneys come and go, mm -hmm. but the core of our firm have been there for a long time. The, the base is our show, what we, what we base it on. There are five pillars that my father taught me a long time ago. Live, love, learn, pray, and inspire. And he always said that if you, uh, 
if you try to do those five things every day, you're going to have a pretty good day, right? So of those five things, live, love, learn, pray, and inspire, what, what of those would jump out at you and, and why? What resonates with you? Um, hmm. uh, I would say either live or, or learn are, are my two big, uh, big ones. Um, I love trying new experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, and to me, that's what allows me to sort of live in the moment. Mm -hmm. You had talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, learn new experiences, new perspectives. And that's what I think also lends itself to, to being able to love other people. Sure. Uh, right. And, and understand them. Um, so uh, I think, uh, one of those <laughs> sort of a mix, I mean, that's a great list. Okay. It, it could be, it, it, yeah, it could be more than one. It could be all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause I, I think, I think they're all connected. Yeah. You know, and, and it really, that's the order that, that, that resonates with me, that makes sense with me. But yeah, I think those five things can be jumbled around and moved around for, uh, yeah. you know, to, based on life experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, People laugh at me sometimes because I just I love trying random bizarre things. I I, I started go karting recently. <laughs> um, Was that just on a whim? You decided? No, I'm yeah, that. yeah. Uh, a Friday afternoon, I went to an indoor uh, go karting track. I uh, tried it, loved it, and then I joined a league. <laughs> <laughs> There's a go kart league. A go karting league, yes. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's a ton of fun, and now I'm interested in in getting outside and trying. And, that has uh, to be very cool. I yeah. love it. I didn't. I I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, if I enjoy it, I may try to build my own cart. <laughs> Again, no background in just automotive. Just, just, let's try this. Yeah. So. That is so cool. I'd love that. Yeah. But that's, congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. I like doing random things like that, trying new experiences and meeting new people doing it. So that's living and learning, man. That's yeah. what that's all about. <laughs> well, listen, thanks. I appreciate it. That is really cool. Good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> Go Card Lake. Who knew? To, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> wow. Well, I appreciate you, young man. Thanks for coming and joining us. Thank you. <laughs>